Okay. There's no exact definition of comedy. There's a goal to make people laugh, but what makes people laugh is completely subjective. Kenny Hotz uses a gag style of comedy. Jew jokes. Why do Jews like to watch pornos backwards? They like the hooker giving the money back. <laughs> rape jokes. Do we want rape? Derogatory slander. You are a... Oh, that's right. I'm a, I'm a, a, I'm a shit-eating shit fuckhead. Yeah. Down syndrome jokes. Niagara is like Disneyland with Down syndrome. And bestiality jokes. You know why you took my kitty mug? Because you couldn't find any kitties to rape. Sometimes they have a loose connection to the competition. Who can stay homeless the longest? Spenny was a suspect in the bum alley rapist case. And sometimes he combines a few of the genres together. Spencer was born out of the rectum of a pig when a drunken homeless guy raped a dead pig at the side of the road. But for the most part, they're just random, interchangeable, throwaway gags. The majority of the jokes can be made without forming a connection to the narrative. And as such, they do well within the Kenny vs. Spenny competitions. Kenny is credited as a writer for the animated series South Park in 2005 and 2012. South Park is a television series which excels in deriving organic comedy through narrative and commentary from current events. Kenny once claimed in an interview that I can't find again, the only thing he ever got in the show is this Jew gold joke. To summarize, the townspeople are thrown into a panic when they think global warming is the cause of a flood in the next town. They believe it's the beginning of a global climate catastrophe. Cartman just arbitrarily blurts out to Kyle, why don't you share your Jew gold with the people caught in the flood? And then the joke escalates into Cartman holding Kyle hostage and demanding the bag of Jew gold. Hand over the gold. What gold? All Jews carry gold in a little bag around their necks. Hand it over. Jews do not carry gold in a little bag around their necks, Cartman. I want your Jew gold. I remember being in my late teens, seeing the episode premiere on Comedy Central, and wondering why was that in the show? It had nothing to do with anything derived from the plot of the episode besides being a gag rip on Jews. Fast forward to a Reddit Ask Me Anything thread from 2014, Kenny admits that Trey Parker and Matt Stone rejected most of his jokes. What were Matt Stone and Trey Parker's involvement with KBS? Taking half of our cash and dumping us like the great jokes I made in the writer's room. In fact, Kenny's Facebook account credits himself as a former fry cook at South Park and not as a writer. So why did they reject his jokes? I can't speak for Trey and Matt, so I'll let them speak for themselves. This is the commentary from Season 10 about the Family Guy episode. We do hate Family Guy. We just don't respect it in terms of writing. There's one thing we always try to avoid in South Park is gags. We, we hate gags. And so whenever we're bringing in new writers, we always know the gaggy writers, right? Which are the ones that no matter what you're talking about and how deep of an issue or whatever character arc or whatever it is, they're just throwing out a gag. And it's just like, yeah, and then he says this. And it's like, that has nothing to do with what we're talking about. That has nothing to do with that character. You're just throwing out a gag. I believe that after 2005, Kenny was essentially phased out of the writer's room in favor of writers who can follow a story arc and grow comedy organically from a situation instead of launching gags where they don't really belong. So what other gags did Kenny submit which were rejected? A writer's room for a show like South Park can have eight or more people all talking at the same time. Sometimes the jokes bounce around until they grow and land in the script. Sometimes they lose their energy and land on the floor. And sometimes the jokes that grow take a while to find a script where they work. For example, the police officer in the prostitute sting. Take them all to the station for oral and anal sex with a prostitute. Half of them didn't even use a condom. Hand me that evidence bag. <laughs> Sir, some of us are wondering if maybe you're not taking this role a bit far. What? No way. The thing I got the most comments on was the the cop basically shitting cum into an evidence bag. <laughs> that entire joke of the guy, of the cop dressing up like a prostitute, being like, I'm going to go bust guys, and then waiting until the whole job was finished to be like, freeze, was like, so we came up with that like during Orgasmo. Yeah, that was a It was like a long time, time ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think it was even going to be in Orgasmo or something. And then it was just always an idea that we had kind of lingering. Since then, I have seen KVS scenes, which came before similar South Park scenes. It makes me wonder how many of Kenny's gags were shelved until they fit into a storyline. 
Here are two examples of super specific gags that possibly came from Kenny, but never got used in South Park until he was no longer employed as a writer. These gags were used in Kenny vs. Spenny years before being used in South Park. The first one is bestiality, one of Kenny's staple styles of humor. Could this be the end of Kenny 3000 being raped by cracks or uh? It's time for someone to get this shark off me. You don't blow a shark mating whistle on dry land. You are supposed to blow it. Ah, ah! Lindsay, get this thing off of me. No, not the shark again. Not the shark again. And the second is overt grotesque brutality. I'm gonna rip your fucking limb out of your socket. Then I'm gonna beat your fucking head with your bloody fucking limb, then I'm gonna ram it right up your ass. The prince now attempting to remove one of the princess's arms, as is of course the tradition. The princess screaming with pain, everyone watching with anticipation, and the arm is off. Things are back to normal here in Canada. Time-honored traditions are once again, yes, the princess is sticking the princess's arm up his ass. There it goes. It's really making a good go of it. What a wonderful day for Canada, and therefore of course, the wealth. These aren't base ideas that just any writer could come up with either. In a commentary, Trey and Matt indicate that they try and stay away from base ideas that any writer could come up with. This is the Jeffersons. This is another one of those ideas where uh, we resisted it for a long time just because it was such a, again, such a base idea and just it was sort so of cliche, like, really. Yeah, it was like, oh, we're gonna make fun of Michael Jackson. What you know? But these scenes are very specific things that would take a very specific person to come up with. Did Trey and Matt get ideas from watching Kenny vs. Spenny? Or are these some of Kenny's ideas that temporarily fell to the floor? I have no evidence to say what they are, but I believe that Kenny may have had a hand in these ideas. Maybe they just needed time to find a place, and it didn't happen until Kenny was no longer on the payroll. What do you think? Let me know in the comments, and thanks for watching.